Hello and welcome everybody. Okay, thank you, Greg. All right, uh, welcome to the uh, webinar this morning. Today we are uh, actually going to be here with Rahul Mohindar. I am Kelly Clement, I am your host. Uh, and I'll be introducing Rahul in just a moment. But the first thing we always need to do, of course, whenever we do a webinar is go through our legal disclaimer. So let me go ahead and go through the legal disclaimer really quickly, and then we'll get right into the meat of it. So this demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins, and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines for interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So just to reiterate, uh, we're not here to give you any trading advice. We are just here to demonstrate the RMO ATM today and how it works. Uh, you shouldn't take any trades based off the information that you see today. Uh, this is just an informational webinar. So uh, let's go ahead and introduce Rahul Mohindar. Who is Rahul Mohindar? Well, uh, for me, Rahul is actually a great friend. Uh, we've been uh, We've been partners uh, in business for quite a number of years, but we've also been great friends. Rahul is one of the best uh, instructors that you'll come across. Uh, we've, we've been dealing with Rahul as in Metastock for over 25 years, I think. Uh, Rahul's a, actually one of our resellers in India and does a great job of helping people and supporting people uh, using Metastock software in India. But, a long time, about in version 10, we added his trading strategy called the RMO into Metastock. It stands for the Rahul Mohindar Oscillator. And that has fast become one of the most popular trading strategies inside Metastock. It's still included inside Metastock 17 today. So if you have Metastock 17, you can jump in and use that. Uh, but people wanted more from Rahul. They wanted more of his methods, what he actually gets out there and teaches and what he promotes uh, and what he actually uses in his trading. They are most part of that, but what he developed was an add-on called the RMO ATM. The RMO ATM is a collection of all of Rahul's trading strategies and what he uses to trade and teach people how to trade. So today you're in for a treat. He's gonna be showing you a lot of the new things that he's added into the latest build of the RMO ATM. Uh, I'm excited to see it and go through it. This will be my first time seeing it as well, some of these new features, so I'm excited about it. Rahul, are you uh, you ready to show us this great stuff that you've got going? Oh, absolutely, Kelly. I've been waiting to do this, and uh, <laughs> no better time the way we are poised in terms of the markets. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get you on here, and I'm going to give you control so you can share your screen. Okay. Okay, I am seeing your screen now. Perfect. I'll go ahead and turn off my camera, and I'll go ahead and turn off my microphone, and I'll let you get to it, Rahul. Thank you, Kelly. We'll we'll connect back soon. Well, welcome everyone, and uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, help users understand uh, the RMO ATM or the RMO itself. And uh, I think uh, one of the lovely things that Kelly and his entire team at Metastock does is uh, to keep helping users and educating users in terms of how to better use the product so that you finally have a tool that makes you more money, that makes you, uh, you know, makes your analysis so much more meaningful. And this is so relevant because a lot of companies I've seen who want to just sell stuff and put stuff out there. But I think what makes things meaningful is when Metastock comes out, gives you all this education for free, tries and helps the user best understand the product and exploit all the tools. So again, kudos to the entire team there, the entire backbone in terms of be it the support team uh, and the sales team. I think they do a wonderful job. And I'm going to try and do my bit in terms of showing you what I use a lot in my everyday trading. And I really like to expose you to a multiplicity of systems that I use. And in today's uh, demonstration, I will be showing you various stocks and symbols, uh, different time frames. Uh, but however, I'd like to stress on the fact that, you know, we would need to focus finally 
into a particular style of trading, a particular time frame, and uh, work on that. So we'll, we'll keep talking about various techniques, and I would like to give you some direction in terms of how to make this meaningful and successful for yourself. So whilst I'm going to expose you to a lot, uh, my mission is that you would be able to put these pieces together into uh, evolving a rule-based approach. So without further ado, I want to dive straight in, and I'm going to jump in by giving you a bit of an introduction to the inbuilt RMO system uh, inside of Metastock. So as Kelly mentioned, in Metastock 10, that was the first time the RMO was introduced, and uh, you know every uh, Metastock user has access to the Armo. The Armo ATM is an add-on, and of course, those who have subscribed do have access to it. Uh, we will talk about the ATM. That's the goal today, but I, I need to kind of build the blocks up. So therefore, I'm going to start with the Armo, give you a bit of an introduction and overview, and then we'll take it forward. So what is the Armo? The Armo is an oscillator, which is designed to help you understand where the primary market trend is looking like so is the primary trend or the long-term trend or the major trend call it whatever you want is the main trend of the market up or down and i think that's a very relevant question because what we want to do is if the rmo is positive and the longer term is positive we want to trade in the direction of that major trend it's a bit like saying you know if the river is going upstream we want to go in that direction. We want to go upstream as well. The trend is your friend. Try and align yourself into that same direction. If you're going to fight the current, it's going to backfire, and it's going to be much harder to handle. So the idea is to identify a long-term trend, a primary trend, and trade in direction of it. Now, a lot of users, they manually draw trend lines. They use different indicators. Uh, nothing against in any particular indicator, but just to name a few conventionals, the MACD, the RSI, the stochastics. I mean, there are various, there's a whole host of stuff out there. Uh, and what happens is you try and blend in as to, okay, what's a couple of these saying and try and blend in a few and try and see which way is the market looking like. So it's almost like a bit of a manual and a subjective assessment, which is where I felt we need a tool that is more objective, which is more defined, which is rule-based, which just tells me simply is the light on or off? Is it bullish or bearish? And that was the goal with which I built the RMO. And let me tell you, I come across to you uh, from the shoes of an, you know, an everyday trader, someone who, trades and tracks the US equity markets, the Indian equity markets, the Australian markets. So I've pretty much uh, got my hands everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of options, futures, and at the same time, positional trades. So there's a, there's a lot that one does. And uh, I speak to you from the shoes of an actual trader. Don't just think here's someone who made a product and a software, and that's, that's where I'm coming from. I think when you'll hear me speak and when you'll hear the passion which i uh, you know talk about the subject with that will help you resonate that what, everything i talk about is about how do you translate in these into real trades into trades that make you money and i look at it from that risk is to reward perspective so that we make things more actionable so i'm coming to you from the shoes of that trader the shoes which uh, you are in uh, whether you're an investor, whether you're a trader. For me, it doesn't really matter in terms of what symbol you're trading or what time frame you prefer. But what matters to me is can we align ourselves to a set of rules where we are uh, less subjective and more objective? So let's look at the RMO and why this came about. And again, uh, the, the first reason I built the RMO system was to make things objective. So I was using tools like the MACD and the RSI. Now, if you look at this chart, price is making a new high. And you can see we've marked uh, these points where you know the pivots keep rising up. The price keeps making new highs, but the RSI keeps giving you that negative divergence where the RSI is unable to make new highs. And that negative divergence kind of gives me a bit of a warning bell that you know don't buy. And what happens to these equities, which are so strong? They just keep going up 
right? So you have the MACD, which is crisscrossed so many times. You get the sell there, the buy there, the sell there. And what I thought was I was making my, you know, my brain do too much of processing. And finally, I was making this so subjective as, you know, it's a bit like saying that if I'm on the buy side, I'm only going to look at indicators which show me the buy side. So it wasn't really uh, something which was so objective. It was more that my mind and my heart was tilting towards the direction of my trade. I was kind of getting a bit emotional to it. So with the RMO, I could take this stuff out. For example, if the RSI is overbought, a lot of people say, well, just because it's overbought, you should only be selling it, right? Or you should be exiting it, or you should be cautious. And I would kind of take that other viewpoint and say, hey, if something is overbought, why is it overbought? Why is there so much of demand that it became overbought in the first place? It could be that the stock is actually that bullish. It could be there's so much demand that could drive it even higher. So just because something is overbought or oversold or, you know, is at a level of 90 or at a level of 10 or 20, that's not the reason why you pull the trigger, right? We need to understand where divergence ends. We need to understand this a little deeper. So my point was I, I need to kind of, get away from drawing trend lines and looking at divergences and MACDs, which were often flip-flopping. And even when you draw simple trend lines, nothing against it, but it's subjective. You kind of twist and turn and fit the trend line to the trade that you're in. And, and this is where I say that we make technical analysis often more of an art than the science bit. And I'm leaning more towards can we make it a little more scientific, a little more objective, or rather than trying to uh, kind of paint a picture uh, which suits us? So if you look at even for this uh, at this chart, this is Apple on a weekly chart, and I think this is up to date right up to yesterday, if not today. You can see over here the market has obviously this Apple's had a huge rally over 2019, 2020, right through 2021. We're at new highs at each stage. Every time the market's made a new high, what's what's been happening? If you look at that RSI up top, it's been a negative divergence, right? The price is making newer highs, uh, and the RSI is not able to make new highs. In other words, making lower tops on the RSI. So these are all signs of a negative divergence. So you would always be scared holding through the stock, whereas I said, look, I need to get rid of this whole thing. And if I look at this chart back in 2016, right in the beginning of the chart, that's when the RMO went from a negative to a positive. And you know, that's the weekly Apple chart and it's been solid from there. And you want to stay in a positive direction. We're not looking at the shape and size of the RMO. We're not looking at the curls. We're not looking at the value. We're really looking at, is it above zero? I'm bullish. If it's below zero, I'm bearish. So that helped me iron out that big question as to is my primary trend up or my primary trend down and when I say primary a lot of users ask me define what you call as primary or long term well I would say anything which is 60 bars or more six zero that is 60 bars or more which translates to about three months on a daily chart and if you're looking at a hourly chart we're looking at 60 hours so no matter what time frame you prefer using i'm looking at a a primary trend being something as as good as 60 bars or more right so we want to make sure that if the primary trend is looking solid we want to make sure we trade in the direction of the primary trend imagine the guy who's been keeping on shorting apple from 2016 you should have focused only where to buy it rather than where to sell it right so you can see we've got a lot of arrows on the chart a lot of bar colors and i'm going to come to those pieces these are automatically stamped with the armor template you want to focus on the blue buy arrows and the blue bars when we don't want to focus on the red bars or the red arrows because you know the primary trend is positive because the RMO is above zero. So uh, keep it as simple as that. If the primary trend is bullish, we want to try and find blue bars and buy arrows. If for any reason you have a stock where the primary trend is bearish, in other words, the RMO is below zero, we would look for where to sell that. And therefore you'd look for red bars and red arrows, okay? So bullish or bearish market, the RMO is going to keep you uh, in a clear direction. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, will it always perform to perfection? Well, obviously not. 
when we're looking at technical analysis, nothing is perfect. But if we can lean to a 70% accuracy in terms of directional sense, that is quite a job. So the whole idea is to kind of not just get you more accuracy, but also help you ease out the process rather than looking at 10 different indicators manually and twisting and turning trend lines and trying to adjust values of various indicators. This is a much more straight cut real approach where you can be answerable to yourself and say, hey, this was positive and therefore I bought it, right? So uh, that's where it makes sense. You want to make sure that you're trading in the direction of a stronger force. So for those of you who are, who are just in case absolutely new to it, right click on the chart, apply template is what you'd click on and then select the inbuilt RMO trade model and that will get you this template which I am looking at at this point. So what is the advantage of trading in the direction of our primary trend? There are really three advantages. Number one, if the primary trend is up and I'm buying, it increases the odds of my winning. Secondly, we are trading in the direction of a stronger force. Chances are that the up moves will burst out in a much quicker fashion. And finally, we're in the direction of that big picture. We've got our goals and vision that our long term is positive. And therefore, if you really want to make this uh, a longer term trade, you also have that possibility. For example, if you get stuck in a trade and you want to say, uh, you know, long term is solid, you want to hang into it, uh, we will do that, but not at the cost of not using a stop loss. We have to keep money management ahead of everything. So we'll talk about it practically as we go along. But in essence, if you know you're trading in the direction of the stronger force, the primary trend, the big picture, you obviously have better odds at your trade, right? Now, when you're looking at the Armo template, let's look at the three different elements. The arrows, which are marked on the bar chart, so you can see red arrows and blue arrows. Now the arrows indicate the shorter term trend. In other words, they're very quick to come, right? You know, they turn very quickly. The minute you have uh, the swing trade indicators crossing over, you will see that the swing trade uh, indicator, which is the pink and the blue, that's what generates these arrows. Not that you need to look at the swing trade indicators, but I'm just explaining to you some of the building blocks so that it's easier for us to go along. So as you see the arrows, you would really be looking at buy arrows when the RMO is bullish. Now, how do I know the RMO is bullish? Look at the bottom ribbon. You'd see a ribbon over there where the expert marks RMO bullish or a green zone. Or you could look at the oscillator right on the top where you can see the value is greater than zero, right? Where I would caution you is a lot of users try and judge the curve of the RMO. Do not judge the curve or the size because look, it can curve down for four bars and then curve back up. It could curve down for three or four bars and the price could also be going up during that time. So don't get granular into this. Keep it simple. And I think that's the hardest part. A lot of us have complicated analysis to such a level that simplicity becomes a little difficult. So I'm trying to get you back to something very easy where you say, if I'm above zero, I'm bullish, and I'm going to look at blue bars and buy arrows for buying. The medium term trend is also marked in the bar colors. So the bar colors has an expert which marks the bars either red or blue. When I have red bars, it means a medium term trend is threatened. When I have a blue bar, a medium term trend is showing strength. So it's very typical that you would first get in a buy arrow and then subsequently get the blue colored bar. They don't obviously have to occur at the same time. So the lovely thing about this template is it's blending in short term, medium term, and long term. And this is very important in any system that you and I trade. And let me explain this a little deeper. A lot of users, look at various time frames and I keep cautioning people from not looking at various time frames. For example, we have traders who say, look, I've checked the daily and I've checked the 60 minute and I've checked the weekly and I've checked the monthly. If everything is positive, it's probably time to sell sometimes. You do not need to look at so many different time frames. You should have an indicator suite like this, which is looking at short term, medium term, and long term. Focus on one time frame. If you keep switching the time frame, that will threaten you because you will keep changing your view. 
you know why we most of the times change our time frame it's when we get into a loss let's say you started trading with a five minute chart and you know you've come close to your stop level you're like oh no 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 the hourly chart looks pretty good and i'll i'll still hold on so you kind of make that an excuse sometimes and i think you can resonate with me uh because these are all basic mistakes we've all made and if you haven't made them i'm just trying to caution you that if you're new to this uh, you know the mind will waver in that direction the minute you you come close to your stop you'll find a reason to hold it through sometimes right so changing time frames often leads to indiscipline people say it leads to confirmation well too much of confirmation is not a good thing when you are so dependent that oh i'm going to check everything trust me by the time a daily weekly and monthly is a buy the probably the stocks at a 52 week high so you know please go back and think if i can stick to the same rules on the same stock on the same time frame with the same amount of money and i can get you know then only can i assess am i seven out of ten accurate the problem happens is we keep switching the stock we keep tweaking the time frame and it goes wrong we say no that's positive let's hold it through and you know then we kind of get into that vicious circle so i'd urge you to use a suite like this which handles the short term medium term and long term rather than having to uh, you know look at multiple time frames if you can focus on one time frame make it your route it's much easier right focus on the first breakout and this is kind of a very important aspect when you trade the rmo you get multiple arrows you know on the buy side but where do i want you to focus on i want you to focus on the first time when you start seeing blue bars a buy arrow look on the left side somewhere in that november period mid november is when the rmo went from a bearish to a bullish mid november is the period where you first got the arrow that's the short term signal then you got the medium term the bar colors turned blue and then finally the rmo went bullish so that's the point where the trend has really changed and that's the point of first breakout why do i call it first breakout it's the first time i've moved out from a series of red bars or an rmo bearish zone this my friends over here is a add on breakout so you know in january and february and you know all these next blue bar arrows that you are seeing you are basically calling these add on breakouts now as the name suggests add ons could be reasons to add on to that trade but again my point is look the juice is in the first breakout why not focus on the first breakouts you know personally i'm i'm only a first breakout trader the add ons are more to use for trailing a stop so every time i get an add on trade and the high of the bar is taken out i'd like to use that immediate fulcrum point as my new stop and you know then elevate the trade in that direction so use the add on trades to maybe use lift your stops rather than just adding on to a position it gives you more conviction to hold on at the same time and also gives you more risk protection so the first breakout is where you want to focus on the first time when you get into a blue bar a buy arrow an armo bullish you want to buy above the high of that bar and then trail through so as i mentioned the rules are very simple three little things the buy arrow the blue bar and the armo bullish and this is all automate all automated for you the template is inbuilt you don't need to make any edits you just apply a template you see all the three elements we even have explorers built in for you we have experts which mark the ribbon so it's all done in that template you really are not uh, having to do any adjustment or you know i'm going to change this value and draw that line no it's about simplifying so 3d buy has these three elements i call it a 3d buy because the three elements three dimensions are the are the blue bars the buy arrows and the rmo in simple words the short term the medium term and the long term and then for the sell side if the rmo is negative like you see on this chart the rmo has been below zero you're going to look at an opportunity where you get a, a red arrow as a selling point you know so where's the first breakout in this example it's when the armor turns for the first time uh, from a bullish to a bearish so somewhere there is the first breakout these other ones which i've marked in vertical olive lines more towards august september they really land up being just add on so i could have even more every arrow could really be an add on so for me the add ons is more that okay if i get an add on i'm going to use the previous high 
or the previous fulcrum point uh, as my new stop and continue to latch on to that trade. So that's the way I kind of like to handle it. So try and keep it simple. First breakout is what's relevant. And always use a bit of a trigger point when you buy. For example, if you have you know, a blue bar and you have a buy arrow, like in this case I've marked, uh, you know, look down at the base on the ribbon, the RMO just went positive. Notice the high of that bar or the high of the previous bar even. And why did I look at the previous bar? This bar is a very small inside day. Usually if you have an inside day, I'd like to look at the previous bar. An inside day is a bar that's kind of capsuled inside the previous one, right? So even whether you look at the inside day high or the previous day's high, it does not cross the high. So it does not qualify a buy trade. It does not action you into a buy side trade, right? So these are very relevant that not just the 3D, in other words, not just the buy arrow, the blue bar and the RMO positive, but buy above the high. That's a very important qualifier. Why do I call it a qualifier? It's the simplest test of strength that just go above the previous bars high or just go above the signal bars high. That's a very simple qualifier that we can use to kind of reconfirm that yes, this buy signal is validated. Right. So keep it, keep that little trigger. It always helps you imagine like in this example, it completely saved you off the trade. Right. So same here, you've got a one little bar that comes in and the RMO gets into a negative zone just for one little bar. And that bar's low is not broken. Right. So despite having red colored bars and the arrows, uh, you don't need to go short on it simply because sell below the low. It does not break the low of that bar. Now, Here's a chart of Facebook, and I put this up more to give you a, a kind of a perspective, even in the current rally that you've seen in 2021. You can see over here, where is my first breakout? It's somewhere in March, where I rotated from red colored bars, where I put that bull sign there. Red colored bars moves into a blue bar, and therefore that's my first breakout. Subsequently, I have got many add-ons. And why have I put that little plain face smiley there? It's simply because you don't have to buy. Just think if you bought every little add-on, were they that fruitful? They were very high up in price. And if you bought very high up in price, it also means high risk because your stops are going to be deep. And notice the you know half of them really made you struggle through it. So use the add-ons more as an opportunity that, okay, I've got an add-on. Can I use this fulcrum point as my new stop? I got another add-on, let's use this. I got another add-on, let's use this immediate point. So you're able to keep lifting your stops through. And you can see right from March through now, you're able to kind of continue that positive consensus on the stock, right? Now, coming to another very uh, important element is a lot of users ask me that, do all the three dimensions have to click in the same day or the same bar? Well, obviously not. It cannot happen, in my opinion, always on the same bar. Usually it would be split up. And I want to draw your attention carefully into the little square that I marked or the rectangle. In fact, you would see over here they've got a buy arrow and a blue colored bar. In other words, the short term signal and the medium term signal. However, why would I not buy it here? Because the RMO is in a bearish zone. Subsequently, the RMO went into a bullish zone, right? So you want to think, should I buy it above this bar now that all three have aligned? Now, this is where I try and say is, see where you got the first arrow, the first blue bar, and the first time when the armor went above zero. Use the highest point. In this case, I'm going to use this bar's high as my trigger point. So identifying that trigger point is very important. Don't just say here, all three have aligned, therefore I'm buying it. All three have aligned, and I will use the highest point to buy. Right. So this is a small little element which I thought I should come across. This doesn't happen often, uh, but at the same time, we need to be aware and uh, therefore it will help us refine our trades a little better. So if you've got an arrow, a blue bar and an armor bullish, try and use the highest of the three as the trigger point. So in this case, it doesn't trigger through on the buy side. And finally, you land up triggering more towards March. So let's kind of roll up in terms of what I've talked about. First or add on, this is the big question. And this is where I want to draw your attention to that. Please focus on this. Become a first breakout trader because that's the one which has a much lighter stop and a much more intense result in terms of profits. 
an add on trade as i was mentioning to you usually is sometimes a struggle and should be used more in terms of a trailing stop trigger with a filter in other words buy above the high of the signal bar or buy above the high of those points so using a trigger is very important you saw in those different examples sometimes it just won't clear that level and therefore you get saved of the trade and of course the last three are more uh, relevant from the point of view that trade discipline is something which i think we all need to keep resonating with clearly because you need to be disciplined with these rules you know on the same stock the same rules 10 times in a row and i keep saying this at in every webinar in every session because we don't give ourselves a fair chance often i have seen a lot of users who kind of you know grind through so much of trading and then they feel like oh you know i'm not doing well but when i look back in the past everything looks fine but when i do it it doesn't look good well and then when i ask them look did you do it no i didn't do it and why didn't you do it because there's the real answer is oh i was looking at uh, american express then then i switched it to exxon then i switched it to verizon and i kept jumping all over i kept changing the stock i kept changing the time frame someone talked about the 200 day moving average sometimes you change your method right so keep your method and your time frame the same give yourself a, a fair chance we can definitely use fibonacci in, in case you're familiar with fibonacci that it's a lovely way to reconfirm sometimes the point 618 breaking out along with the armo is a very relevant signal i'm not going to talk about that today but volume as a confirmation of course that goes without saying any study or any signal that you see and you can see uh, an increase of volume uh, and i've plotted a moving average on the volume by default when you plot the rmo trade model you will notice a 50 period exponential average of the volume automatically plotted just to give you that hint that whenever you get a new breakout try and see you have at least above average volumes it doesn't need to be double the average but just a little bit above average is definitely something you should think is relevant and important if you've got a breakout a long-term breakout with under average volumes you want to think twice before taking that trade now let's look at how you will identify this and you know this is where i kind of dive into the rmo atm now if you have the rmo atm we have the power screener which is automatically identifying new signals for me now i've randomly just screenshotted where i got some of these signals so that i could showcase it to you so here we've we've put in a, a list of symbols in this case i put in i think almost all the dow symbols and uh, the dow 30 that is and i try to look for where were there rmo uh, signals and mind you this is not current data so just for the purpose of understanding in this case i've got a chart of walgreen open and you can see that i've got a rmo 3d buy on it and why have i got that rmo 3d buy can you see i got a blue bar a buy arrow and the rmo is bullish so in other words it's an add-on buy now this is where you need to understand that this is an add-on buy so even if you look at the background color of the cells that's coming in as green to help you gauge that the market is in a bullish trend and the a red background is telling you that the market's in a bearish trend for those stocks. In other words, the armor is negative. So just one look at this table tells you that if I'm looking at the, now in this case, this is a five minute interval, majority at, of the symbols at this point in time, whenever I took this screenshot, that is, were on the positive side, right? Bulk of the market or 70% of this market was on the positive side and that helps you really gauge the trend direction so well now if you're looking for the first breakout you know what you want to look for is an rmo 3d buy with an arrow and the beauty about the new rmo uh, 3d buy with the arrow is it'll come right on top so we've built in a new auto sort feature which lifts these first breakouts right on the top so it'll look like this so over here here's an extract of uh, you know a few sin you can see all the ones with an arrow you got two arrows pointing down or two arrows pointing up the arrows tell you that these are not just 3d buys but these are first breakouts these are these are stocks which you should investigate carefully because they have rotated from a positive rmo into a negative rmo or vice versa right so they've rotated for the first time so that way 
you can automatically see the most relevant signals go right up top. So is this signal a lot more rarer? Yes, because you get the first breakout once in the cycle. So it's a very relevant signal to keep in mind. And the beauty is we've also got a voice alert and email alert facility. You can use those features as well. But the beauty about Build 21 is to get the first breakout and get them right on the top so that it draws your attention exactly into the stocks you and I need to be looking at, okay? So the 3D buys and sell will automatically stack right on top. Now, how do you auto sort? Well, open your power screener and just double tap on the column. Right, so let me just quickly uh, see if I have my power screen open. Yes, so let's open up the page for the DAO. And all I'm going to do is if I want to auto sort at any point in time, let this page open up. Um, okay, these are just a bunch of symbols I've got, but let's say let's just take the DAO 30. Um, so you can see over here, I've got multiple columns built in. This is the trend decider. This is a super filter. But let's say I'm looking for uh, a 30 minute signal on the Armo. Just double click on it, and it brings all the signals that need your attention right there. Okay. I'll just turn off the uh, audio on it so that we don't get a voice alert. Otherwise, it might just interfere in our. Okay, there we are. So you have the option to turn off the voice alerts and you can save that through. So here you are. Let's try and recap what we understand from the table. The arrows signal to me the first breakout. So when you get an ARMO 3D buy with the arrow, that's potentially a first breakout. Go in and investigate. What are you going to check? Maybe you reconfirm the volume or the Fibonacci or whatever you want. You can take your pick from there. The up arrow indicates uh, where you have a positive arrow. Uh, so in this case, if I see an up arrow and the RMO is in a red background, not too relevant. Well, maybe if you want to take some profits, maybe you want to think about that, okay? RMO 3D buy in a green background without the arrows, which you see over here, they are really pointing to signals like this, which is more of an add-on, right? So the 3D buys without the arrow sign on the table, uh, that kind of indicates to you that I'm just something which is an add-on, right? So maybe you want to use it for your stop upgradations, etc. So the great thing is with Build 21, we're able to get the first breakout and we're able to get it right up top and we have voice and email alerts as always. So the intelligent auto sorting, why do I talk about this so much? This is something I always wanted, a block sort. A block sort is really a feature where I can sort bullish stocks and bear stocks like a building. Now, if you look at the top floors, the first few lines are always going to be stocks which have a real signal on them. In other words, uh, whether it's an arrow, whether it's a 3D buy or first breakout, they will first be on the top. Anything that which you need to investigate will come right up on the top. But broadly speaking, now you can see 70% of this block is green and the rest is red. So you get a, you get to gauge that this market is still bullish, right? At the point where I took this screenshot, the market was bullish. Now, if you keep looking at it, and if you keep your page the same, and this is what I keep telling, if you focus on the same list of stocks, the same time frame, and the same rules, you will get tuned to this. Your eyes will fall in love with the screen. And trust me, there will come a point where you will be able to probably say that, okay, now the, the odds have tilted, you'll start seeing that, okay, now 70% have become red and 30% are green. And you would be able to sense and gauge that change or shift in the market trend. So block sorting is a lovely way to gauge. It's almost like a little index to the eyes. For those of you who like using explorers, the ATM does come, of course, with the integrated buy and sell setups and a setup for the super filter. Let's dive into the super filter and what's so different with the RMO super filter and why I use the super filter and not the inbuilt RMO alone. So whilst the first breakouts and the 3D buys are relevant, you know what happens in the real world is the markets don't work to that perfect trend line. They don't work to that perfect peak and trough. Often when you read the uh, classic books and technical analysis, you almost feel like, you know, when I look at the chart, I can't draw that line where it always comes to the line and goes back up. Right? Sometimes you can, but not always. In the real world, it's a much more jaggered price action. And that's clearly because of the volatility. That's not always a bad thing. Volatility can also be used in our favor. 
And how can we use it in our favor when we make our tools respond to volatility? So the super filter does not use a fixed value in its calculation like the RMO. It uses a dynamic value. It judges the volatility of the stock and readjusts its value. Okay. So the super filter now marks for you four colors. Hear me carefully. There's an orange, there's a red, a light blue, and a dark blue. So it's not just so the orange color that you see is indicating weakness. The red color that you see is indicating a sell signal, right? Light blue indicates strength. Dark blue indicates extreme strength or a buy. So what you want to do is light blue gives you a sign that maybe the market was dark blue and it's turned light blue, then turns into a red, breaks out on the downside. So you're able to kind of gauge even the trend. And see how it's ironing out the inbuilt RMO itself. When the RMO oscillator over here went positive, what was the bar colors? They were orange. They protected you from buying. So yes, simply, am I trying to come across and say the super filter is better than the inbuilt RMO? Well, obviously it is, simply because it is uh, tailor-made, so to say, or tweak to the volatility of the chart that you're looking at. So it can speed up and slow down and optimize itself to become more accurate and relevant. So in other words, this buy is completely saved. This conventionally could have turned into blue bars and you bought it. But now the bar colors being orange tell you that the super filter, why do I call it a super filter or the ATM armor? It's because it supersedes, because it further accelerates that very, uh, basic RMO that's already there. So it fine tunes it to a degree where you understand. Now, this, for example, is a chart of Intel until, you know, look at the, the recent data, the daily chart. There was this phase in end May or early June, that is, where you see trickles of blue bars, right? You see the buy arrow comes in. You see that, okay, the RMO potentially went into a bullish zone. And maybe that's a point you start resonating and say, oh, maybe I want to buy. This is the first breakout. Now, if you look at that, that's all orange. That saves you. So in other words, the RMO, which was itself a very good signal, you can see even in the past, it worked very well in the past as well. But you know, here where it kind of went through a, a bit of noise because of that sideways price action, it got beautifully ironed out by pasting orange bars and not allowing you to buy despite the RMO kind of flipping into that bullish zone once or twice. So you can look at the bottom. We flipped into bullish here. We flipped into bullish here. But here, these bars stuck to red and orange, unlike the conventional set. So just to compare, just to help you understand that this helps me uh, you know, gauge that trend so much better. For example, you were dark blue when you broke out over here. You definitely want to consider that. But you know, as you get into a light blue and an add-on signal, will I like to buy an add-on which is light blue? No. In fact, maybe I start thinking, why is the deep blue going into a light blue? Maybe it's fizzling, right? So I think this is where we need to understand that you can sense trend transition. You get a much better, uh, you know, gauge in terms of the trend. And I think above all, it smoothens out the already very successful RMO. So it helps you kind of nail that in a much better fashion. So people think, is it just that it's faster or slower? Well, the uh, system is optimized. It could be faster. Like you see, dark blue comes in before the RMO goes positive. And that gives you an early indication of trend change. It slows down when it needs to. For example, here the RMO gives a sell, but it here it's still light blue. So don't think of this as just a faster system or a slower system. It's a system which speeds up and slows down, accelerates or decelerates based on the market volatility, right? So that gives you a, a fair idea of the super filter. And again, let's kind of jump straight into the on uh, the bit where you can see that uh, all these different phases on these charts, I've kind of flipped through a lot of charts, but the idea is you can see how it stays red right through, how it stays blue, right through. So this little flip-flop that you see on the RMO system uh, in build, you know, you take that noise out. Normally, maybe you to take that noise out, you'd be looking at, you know, reconfirming volume, drawing Fibonacci, etc., etc. But here, this is where you make an already good system even more solid because of its fine tune. Now, the super filter is marked out very simply by an upshift or a downshift. So there again, lovely color coding, light blue, dark blue, orange, and red. 
you can see the color coding. An upshift means I've moved from light blue to dark blue. A downshift means I've moved from an orange to a red. A down break means I've got a breakout where you need to go look at that chart and assess. So you can look at all these signals. So the block sorting, again, comes in very handy here. Again, look at that list. So I think this is, again, uh, almost all those Dow 30 symbols. And you'd be able to see over here, again, 60%, 70% is light blue or dark blue. You have very little of orange and maybe five or six symbols which are in red. Again, this is again at the point whenever I did screenshot it, right? And you can see what that blocks are. Now, let's look at that up break right on top. I just took a quick screenshot here. Why is it giving you an up break? Because from orange, it's going into a breaking out into a dark blue. And that's why the background is also dark blue in color. So you can, you know, you get new signals you also get that perfect gauge. So again, all the new signals you need to look at are automatically going to be right on the top. You have the auto sort feature within the power screener. And also the block sorting is automatic. It would just lay out the different colors as little blocks so that you can understand I've got more light blue, dark blue areas than the little oranges and reds, OK? So that's, again, an amazing way that you can use it. One of my favorite models to use with the super filter is the trend decider suite. And today I'm going to talk a bit about this trend decider because we did some massive updates with build 21. And for me, uh, you know, it may, it may feel subtle to you, but for me it's massive simply because of the fact uh, that it makes this whole study so much more fun to use, so much more effective. The trend decider suite comes to you with four different elements, four different intervals. The trend decider, which is uh, extracted from a daily chart, a weekly chart, a 15 day, and a monthly chart. So it looks at these different time phases and then gives you a clear cut level. Now let's make this simple. Let's not worry too much about it. But if I look at a trend decider daily level, if I am above that level, I am bullish for the day. If I am below that level, I am bearish for the day, right? So the trend decider daily level gives you that little sense. So let's make it simple. If I look at this red line, and this is, let's say, the, the weekly level in this case, you can see the moment I broke out of that weekly level, uh, this is a 30-minute chart of McDonald's, which I've put on with the trend decider weekly. The minute we went past it, we've had the stock go from strength to strength. And uh, you know, just before August, uh, end, of, uh, end of July, that is, we had the breakdown where it closed below the red line, and you could see that that's what's uh, brought in weakness into the stock. So just being above the weekly level is an important signal. Just breaking down that weekly level is an important signal that the next week looks bearish, right? So this updates every week, every Monday, it comes to you. Now, the beauty is we can even now scan for the breaks. With Build 21, we've got a scanner which can actually find those symbols that have just broken out or just closed past the trend decider weekly level of the trend decider daily level, whichever you want to use, right? So you can clearly identify those stocks which have just had a new, fresh, clean breakout. And you could be looking at those signals to action. Now, if I use the daily level, uh, I screenshotted this before market. I think this is the Q's and the QQQ probably, I, I reckon, is around 365 now, much lower. The green line represents the daily. You can see if the market was above it, it was bullish. The minute we broke through, bearish. So it's a lovely divider, lovely trend decider. You know, that's why the name trend decider. You below that level, the trend is negative, right? You get a sense, uh, uh, you know, let's see if I have the chart open, right? That's where we are now. So we've got the, you know, today market opened here. We broke down over there. And that's when you got a sense that, okay, things look a little weak just from that trend decided daily level. And mind you, this is an intraday interval of 10 minutes. Of course, a lot of you like to use bars or candles, but just for purposes of explanation, the line's very easy to understand that it broke through the line and you got the weakness. So the green line that you see is the trend decided daily level. The example I showed you with the red line is the weekly. So if you're someone who just wants to trade for the day, maybe you use a trend decider daily. If you want to use just for a couple of days, maybe you're a short-term trader, a swing trader. For a couple of days, you don't mind holding through two or three, four days. You want to use the trend decider weekly level. It kind of helps you stay with that momentum. 
and um, you know the ultimate combination is if you can learn how to blend both and this is where i keep talking about it and we've got a system which automatically blends it for you it's called td auto right trend decider auto let's understand how we use it so let's look at vertical line number one this is the point where the price is lower than the trend decider daily and lower than the trend decider weekly and what's also very relevant is this is the first time the green line is below the red line in other words the trend decider daily is lower than the trend decider weekly right that's an that's a, that's a very powerful signal that's a very very bearish signal because not only in the is the price below the you know the trend decider daily and the weekly but the green line's also gone below that red quite a shift in the trend similarly on the buy side over here right again these are new entry points uh, you know i'm not here to kind of top pick and bottom pick but just to kind of give you an uh, an understanding if you risked you know just for a simple understanding 10 dollars on that trade did you get 15 or more yes if i'm buying here and i'm keeping a stop below that red line if i'm risking 10 did i get 1.5x or more yes so that's what matters if i can be 7 out of 10 accurate and at the same time have a risk is to reward of 1 is to 1.5 or greater that's going to make a, uh, you know make so much more sense uh, why is it bullish here price is trading above the trend decided daily and weekly and the green is now above the red mind you over here we get a sell we have the price trading below both and the green comes below the red and this one didn't work out too well but doesn't matter a little later it turns bullish now do you need to manually calculate all this no fortunately you have the power screener which is scanning and giving you all the new signals right on a plate for you and if you look at the expert advisor look at that beautiful ribbon at the bottom friends it is amazing what it's doing just integrating everything that i just taught you is the closing above daily and weekly is the green line just cross the daily when everything is integrated we have bullish start your trade where the word bullish starts start your sell trade where the word bearish starts okay the first time the, so you you get a very nice idea in terms of one is you could just use the level of one day i know a lot of people who just have focused that you know i'm a day trader i just want to use the trend decide the daily level uh, some who say look i i want to use the weekly level it gives me more alignment i have always recommended using the daily with the weekly uh, and that kind of gives you that magical blend of momentum because a you are kind of looking at the short term element but at the same time you know going with the immediate flow of the market the momentum of the market which means even if you have to hold through a couple of days you're ready to do so so in this case uh, this is a chart of boeing it's 30 minutes but the interval doesn't matter so much to me the trend decider daily and weekly will be calculated from those intervals right so that's what's relevant now as i was telling you the good thing is the trend decider break levels the trend decider can now all be computed live on the current bar earlier we used to have a logic where it could only be computed on a closing bar in other words it would wait for the bar to close but for a lot of advanced users who wanted an early indication as the breakout happens so not only do you have an expert advisor but you also have uh, you know the opportunity to look at bullish and bearish signals now what are the ones that you want to focus on let's cut the chase look at the ones where you have bullish with an asterisk sign on both sides if you have an asterisk sign on this bullish that tells you that this is not just closing about daily and weekly uh, the green lines above the red line but it's bullish for the very first time a fresh breakout a clean breakout just started bearish with an asterisk just started so you're really looking at these and of course these are much rarer in comparison to bullish and bearish so what are these bullish and bearish well it already means that it's it's continues to be above daily and weekly and therefore it marks it as bullish it continues to be below both levels and therefore it continues to be bearish now the beauty of td uh, is we also allowed users to now look at various combinations so we've got a customized uh, trend decider auto where you can say look compare the weekly versus the monthly this is a daily chart of tesla and i might say look i'm not into day trading tesla or whatever i'm i just want to be in it for a slightly bigger opportunity so you can see here the red line is the weekly which is tdw versus tdm the monthly td monthly is that lavender or mauve colored line that you see so you can see if 
the red line breaks the lavender line. In other words, the weekly level breaks the monthly level. That leads to a fall, or the weekly crosses the monthly level. And you know, you see price. Look at this point in early May. We close below both those levels, and that gives you a sign. The red comes below the lavender, and that gives you a sign that it's bearish. So this is how you can uh, look at the trend decider with any time frame. You know, of course, the expert has a default of the trend decider daily versus the weekly. That's the TD auto by default, which is what I continue to recommend. But you know, each trader has different horizons and I respect that and I understood that there are a lot of people who wanted the ability to customize it based on the uh, time horizon that they trade and therefore I said look let's give you the ultimate flexibility you can go in and edit TD auto fully you can say look I want you to compare and let's just kind of give you an idea of what this means I can right click on this and hit edit columns over here so here TD auto is by default but what I could do is I can add a custom. So in other words, go down to the list, add TD Auto custom, right? So click on that. And when I say custom, I could say, okay, I could choose any combination. Maybe I want to combine Trend Decider daily with the Trend Decider 15 day, or the Trend Decider daily with the Trend Decider monthly. Or, you know, like I was showing you in Tesla, let's compare the TD weekly with the, uh, uh, you know, the TD 15 or TD weekly with the TD monthly. This is the one I was showing you in Tesla. So I can click on that and say, okay, give me a calculation based of that. So now it would work on that interval. So it's very quick to do this whole analysis. Just look at how it fills up so quickly and it updates for you real time, tick by tick as you move. Now you also have the feature, or as I mentioned to you earlier, it was always computer on close. In other words, this was always checked and you never had the ability to uncheck it. Now you can uncheck it, but just bear in mind if you switch off compute on close, it also means that you know maybe the price has just gone above it and two seconds later it's below the trend decider level. So you got to be uh, alert that uh, it's for those who want an early indication and don't want to wait for the bar to close, they just want it as it's happening. But I think a lot of users uh, logically did want that early indication, did want the flexibility to choose any kind of combination and not stick with my traditional TD Auto. I still love my traditional TD Auto more because I'm that short-term momentum kind of trader. And I think the TD daily and weekly do a fascinating job, which is why I left the experts and the defaults uh, uh, you know, exactly like they were. But TD Auto gives you that whole flexibility uh, to adjust it. Now you can also add a column called TD break where you choose a TD break over here and you can click on that option and say every time I get a uh, the price crossing the daily or the weekly level, just closing past it, uh, I want an alert. And maybe I'm looking at say a five minute bar. And you, know, you, could, you can see how you can add n number of columns here and uh, fit this in for yourself. So it's calculating if I have any signals like that. Now, of course, in this case, in the current situation that I'm set up with, uh, I don't seem to have that situation, but it can pull up any of those combinations for you. So you say, okay, instead of that, let's try a 30 minute bar. Is there a 30 minute bar? So you can see in this stock over here, we've got the trend decide of weekly having an up breakout. If I looked at a 30 minute chart, so I can go plot the 30, you know, the Exxon and plot that TD weekly and see, am I breaking out there or not? Okay, and then you can reconfirm various other elements as I was mentioning, put on that trend decider template, etc. So with build 21 friends, you get the bullish with the asterisks, the bearish with the asterisks, which really signal to you a brand new move as always, like before, we always had that feature. But with Build 21, you also have a custom auto sort. In other words, you choose what combination you want. You don't have to go with my daily weekly. You can choose uh, any combination you want. So the beauty is you can auto sort. And just to make you familiar, double clicking on any column will help you auto sort. Just double tap on any column. So even now, if I look at this, I can quickly gauge over here the vast majority of signals that I have continue to be on the buy side. So double clicking on LE column gives me that ability to auto sort. And you know, just to give you a very quick heads up, you have the, you know, with Build 21, if you have a few stocks which you just want to paste in, you can always copy and paste from a note 
notepad or an Excel file, if you have a list of symbols, you can just right click over here. You can insert five rows suddenly, and then you could just paste a few symbols. So you can always do that. Those are nice new features that we've uh, built into. And again, the continued flexibility always remains that you can make groups. So let's say if I want to make a group of, say, tech stocks, just click on any cell, hit the asterisk button, and type tech okay so it makes a little group for you which you can expand and collapse so i can exp so maybe i want to put in a few stocks say i want to put in apple okay and i want to put in facebook and let's say ibm and i have these three or four symbols within my tech group now as soon as you put them in what you want to do is if you want to collapse, you collapse. Like here, I've got the Fang stocks. I can collapse, and I just want to look at the Dow. So I said, don't want to look at the Dow, and I want to kind of reopen up the Fang. You can do things like that. So uh, adding a group, just to recap, just double click anywhere, asterisk sign, give the group name. So call it my favorite, okay? And it makes a group for you. You want to insert rows within that, okay? Below that, you, you know, feel free to uh, play around with it. You can always add as many rows as you like. I would only caution, don't keep too many empty rows. It kind of uh, slows down things for you. Uh, try and keep only those many rows which you really are using. Empty cells will affect your auto sorting. Uh, that's the way it's built. Auto sorting is a very relevant feature. It auto sorts even group wise. So uh, inserting of symbols, auto sorting, you know, simple things like page properties while we're on the topic, I think it's relevant to bring it up. You can, uh, you know, do this bit that auto sorting also, you want it happening every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds, maybe you're someone who doesn't like the symbols sorting too often. You know, you might be looking at a particular order of the symbols and you don't want it to keep changing too much. Right, so you wanted to slow it down, speed it up. If you're someone who wants to adjust the number of decimals, so go into the page properties, right click anywhere, go into the page properties, and in the page properties, you can configure how many decimal points you want, auto sorting. Now, another very important thing which I tell users is try and always keep your session timings correct. So, if your chart window properties show you the time is nine to four. Don't have that post-close tick come in. I always like to take it out. It removes the little extra dash that you see post the close. So keep the chart window properties inside of Metastock and this the same, right? So if you put nine to, I think by default, if I re recall, it comes in as 16 or two so that you can see that post-close tick. But I don't want that extra dash uh, on the chart because it just skews the data. Imagine you're looking at a 30-minute bar. You've got all 30 minute bars but the last bar is like a one minute bar because uh, it's just a dash or just a post close tick so a page property is a line uh, you know helps you whether it's configuring a font the number of decimal points the auto sorting speed the session timings uh, it's it's lovely to have these features there because we've thought of that detail we've thought of the fact that uh, what a user would need to do in terms of housekeeping to make this a lot more friendly to the way you use it. So coming back to this, TD Auto, you can customize and choose an interval of your choice. And of course, with the uh, trend, you know, with the ATM, there are a whole host of other studies which I can't talk about all in one go today. For example, someone who trades options, you can use the ATM RMO too. Someone who wants to look at a volume-based study, we have the ATM SWI, which is the strength weakness index. And how does it measure strength and weakness? It analyzes has the market gone up with volume or increasing volume, then there's strength. If the market's going up with decreasing volume, there's weakness. So it analyzes this strength and weakness element just with volume. So the SWI is one of those tools which really focuses on volume alone and gives you a signal like this, where if the price bars are red in color and you see that red line, it dissects bullish and bearish automatically and updates live. It tells you that just on the volume logic, is it bearish or bullish? Mind you, nothing else. It's just looking at the flow of volume. When the market goes up, what's the volume like? When the market's coming down, what's the volume trend like? So it's that simple concept blended in uh, you know, into a real formula to help you understand just in terms of volume flow, am I bullish or bearish? This is a chart of Citigroup I had recently taken a screenshot of. I think probably looks like a five minute to me or a 10 minute, one of those intervals. You can see how beautifully you just on volume flow, even on a short term interval like that, 
you can understand where the trend is moving. So SWI again has its own uh, power screener, has its own expert, has its own commentary. And as I mentioned to you, this is not it. There's so much more to do uh, within the ATM. But I'm trying to highlight to you some of the highly relevant tools in the recent updates, particularly having, say, the RMO 3D buy signals come right on top, the first breakouts right on top, the super filter, which does such an excellent job of filtering out uh, you know, and giving you a more refined RMO approach, the SWI, which is volume driven, and the trend decider, which is again something which is so beautiful in terms of giving you an alignment to momentum. So the trend, in my opinion, use the ATM RMO template, what I also Christian, the super filter, right? I keep referring to it as a super filter, but if you're trying to apply it, you're going to right click, apply template on the Metastock chart and choose ATM RMO that will be available to you. For momentum, the trend decider suite honestly is unbeatable. It's so powerful. I think you have to use it. You will be addicted to it. Its performance is exemplary. Volume, I mean, we make a mess of this tool so often we don't sometimes even factor it in and the SWI does such a fantastic job. So just recapping some of the few elements I talked about. And there's a whole universe out there within the ATM suite. But I would say even if you could just focus on just three elements, for example, what I tried to talk about. And of course, the new features are new features. We keep improving features more so that it becomes more user friendly, more relevant and more accurate to you. But I think the whole law of focus of focusing on one time frame, a fixed list of stocks with the same kind of rule set, this is a great way to kind of recap and make this a starting point for yourselves. If you're trying to struggle with the system, even you want to just align to a few things and I'm sure you would be able to streamline it. Now I keep uh, referring to this as we talk about a trading plan, but I think we have to understand the process that goes into it. It's very easy to use that word, oh, you know, plan to trade or trade to plan, you know, we're very quick to say it. Uh, you know, you most people don't understand that the process has to be that first of all, you need to identify what, not the stocks, identify the systems that you're going to be using, the time frame that you're going to be using, the discipline that you're going to be implementing. Everyone's chasing, oh, I'm going to look at a universe of 200 stocks and I'm going to be the smart guy who finds the two best stocks within that whole universe. Maybe you are. Maybe you will at one point. But the first thing is, can you identify with yourself what are the two or three systems I want to use? Even within the ATM suite, I've given you 35 odd fields. You don't have to use everything. You don't go to a buffet to have every dish on that table. You want to select these are the three strategies I'm going to use. These are the two. This is the one strategy I want to use. Identify what are the list of symbols? What's the interval I'm going to work with? What am I going to be focusing on? Weight. Which ones am I going to give more weight to? In other words, sometimes you have four buy signals, four 3D buys. You want to check things like Fibonacci. You want to check things like the volume and then give it the weight. Trade management. That's another very important element. If I'm risking $1, Am I earning a dollar fifty each time? Only then am I going to take the trade, right? So you need to elevate your thinking to this kind of an approach, rather than loosely saying, you know, are you trade to a plan? We need to identify with ourselves. We need to sit down and decide what exactly am I going to go about. And I, I try to give you some kind of a practical direction of how you can go out and do this. So with the ATM 3.0, let me tell you that. The whole goal of building such a suite of tools was honestly my own personal training. And why I built it this way so that I land up taking trades exactly the way I want to take them. And, you know, rule based and effective is very important to me because the biggest enemy in trading, in my opinion, is our mind. We make it subjective. We twist trend lines. We change the value of the moving average. We twist and turn and tweak too much change the time frame. Sometimes you get upset, you change the symbol itself, right? I want to make this rule based and effective so that I can be answerable to myself. It works on all time frames and asset classes. Friends, I use this whether you want me to look at it on the dollar index, on gold, you know, I have investments and trades up in so many different asset classes, which I'm managing on a very active basis. And 
it does not change the rules for me but whatever time frames i have selected i am focusing on that now focus on being adaptive rather than you being adaptive the system itself is adaptive to the volatility of the stock so that's very important to me that can my system handle the volatility or change itself with the market scenario is backed by solid scanning and money management mind you it sounds like a rosy line but let me tell you there's no system out there which has a power screener of this metal and i say that quite openly because you're not manually running a scan automatic scanning live real time on a symbol list of your choice on intervals of your choice absolutely to the point of writing the word buy sell bullish bearish 3d buy first breakout just imagine what's gone in that's what i call hardcore scanning which is effortless it's hands free it doesn't even need you to go click on something and run the scan once you set your power screen you open it and you have it when i say money management when we built the system i worked to a logic that anywhere if i'm taking a risk of one i want to check i get 1.5 else i call it a fail the system has multiple strategies i haven't talked about things like the rmo2 or the counter trend indicator that's also part of it you have breakout tools like the breakout catcher the atm are more counter trend strategies and volume driven strategies right all three that's a very important blend sometimes you have system that just follow moving averages or just have breakout strategies they don't have something which is counter trend or driven by volume and last but not least we're here to back you up whether it's meta stock in america or viratech which is in india we're almost here for you 24/7 if you look at it clearly because of the fact where well, i shouldn't say 24/7 but 24 hours on all business days because when we are open meta stocks closed and when meta stocks closed we are open so one way or the other we're here to help you and uh, of course you have manuals within it and if you're wondering how do i get access to the manual well one way is go into your my downloads and look at it the other way is if you got your pass if you got the atm just click on the question mark icon there help and you click on it and it quickly goes to the pdf manual and loads it up for you right so that would bring up the full manual and this is the updated manual which also talks of the new features in build 21 so you can see that uh, it all pulls it up and you can go through that manual which is again a 2021 release right so we have really thought through this and of course videos i'm sure you can go into the meta stock channel or go into various uh master class videos which will be in your my downloads also uh so you know there's a lot of backing that's there and of course if you have questions if you think that there's some topic or some area you need a bit of a touch up or brush up on we're there to back you on it it's not just selling you a product it's not just having a product which is just there in fact it takes a lot for us to even upgrade or elevate a product because i have to see that if i am releasing something new or even adding the slightest new feature is it a beneficial to the user and better than what we did we don't want to just throw new things at people we don't want to come out so it takes a lot of time for us to do an update it sometimes means there could be a phase of one or two years of development and then we put out an update so we're not there to just pitch updates at you and keep giving you updates every third day or third week or third month it can take time but again when we build a system we have to make sure like it's like when we built the super filter we had to make sure it was better than what you had when we built the trend list we had to make sure there was a solid value that it added to your whole analysis so there's a lot of thought that goes into this because mind you viratech as a company me and my entire team we're here in this long haul we're not some fly by night we've been in this for over two decades and hopefully uh you will see that from that practical perspective we deliver results and i think this kind of gives you a first hand feel of some of the new features and uh, some of what i use actively i'm going to turn it over to kelly and hopefully if we can take any questions if there are any i'd be happy to answer them or right. oh excuse me all right rahul thank you very much Uh yeah, I'm just uh, looking at questions right now. So let me uh, kind of pull these up. Uh we do I do have well first of all I have a comment from uh YouTube where somebody says, "Wow, awesome stuff. Thank you guys." So that's a that that says a lot. 
Um, and then I have the uh, a question about um, the system being, somebody felt like it was a little too complicated. How would you address that, uh, Rahul? Okay, I'd probably simplify it by saying that, well, look, we may have a lot of indicator fields out there, but really there's six or seven core strategies. That's it. So for example, there's the super filter strategy. There's the trend decider strategy. There's the SWI strategy. Do you have to use all? No. Can you use any one? Absolutely. You focus on just one template, right? So if you look, just go with the template of choice. And I think, of course, there are benefits of blending one or two. But I think if to start with, even if you just followed one or just followed two, that's more than enough. Practically and personally, I'd even go out to say, I really follow two strategies because they kind of fit my style of trading. So it's it's really up to you understanding that, look, you've got that whole buffet there. And that's because, look, we, we, we a good spread is something what every product tries to give you. And uh, that doesn't mean that the product's complicated. It means this is a, one of the few products which has built-in scans, which you know puts out words like buy and sell and gives you that whole direction. So my whole suggestion to you would be that focus on just one strategy, two strategies. So we have a whole host of tools. Why are there 35 fields? Why are there 40 or indicators? It's all because that's what goes into building one, right? It's not like you're using every single piece. But, you know, just the Armo super filters blended in probably a dozen of different elements to even come to where it is. So focus on each template and each strategy as it is. And let me tell you, just seven templates is what is offered. Stick to those seven. And I agree with that, Rahul. I, I think uh, when we talk about complexity, you know, it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying at the beginning is, you know, kind of keeping it simple and choosing what you're going to do. It's not, it's not combining all these things together. It's saying, right. well, which system am I going to use? And then which stock am I going to trade based off of that? So it's, it's that narrow down and making it part of your trading plan. And I think that was really important in what you said there that it's first picking which strategy you're going to use and then sticking to that and not trying to change it in the middle of a trade. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, otherwise, let's see, I did have one uh, question just on clarification and I can address this, was on, um, depending on which version of Metastock you're using will depend on the type of alerts that you're getting. If you're using Metastock end of day, with the power screener, you'll only be getting end of day alerts. If you're using Metastock RT, then you can get the real time alerts if you're paying for exchange fees. If not, then they'll be delayed uh, based off of the data that you're getting inside Metastock. So that's, that's just one clarification there. Uh, the next question uh, is, what is the cost? Well, I think I can address that question. Let me, uh, is it okay if I take over the- uh, Oh yeah, absolutely. The Please sharing do. there? Okay, so we've got a picture of Rahul here. Let me go back to the RMO ATM3. Now, again, this is the latest build. If you have already have RMO ATM, you can just go into your My Downloads and download the update to get this latest build if you haven't done that. Uh, but what does the RMO ATM include? Well, first of all, it includes the Power Screener app, which Rahul has gone through very intensively today. And then it includes all the different strategies that he's talked about as well today. The breakout catcher, the counter trend indicator, I'm a big fan of the, of the counter trend. I really like that uh, that system, the SWI and the trend decider. Uh, Rahul spent quite a bit of time on that and that's my other favorite strategy in here. Uh, and then the RMO super filter, which is a great enhancement to the standard RMO that comes uh, built into Metastock, helping you get in and out of those trades sooner. Uh, normally this cost is 149 per month for the RMO ATM. But since we're doing the launch of the RMO ATM build 21 uh, as part of the RMO ATM 3, we're gonna do a special offer today where you can actually go in and you can subscribe for $99 a month rather than the 149 a month. If you like to prepay for things for the year, which is a great way to go, it's normally 13.95 for the year. Uh, we're offering it for 10.69 per year. And the great part of this is you get to keep that price forever. Once you subscribe at that rate of $99 a month or $10.69 a year, 
you get to keep that rate forever. So it won't go up to the 149 or 1395 for the year. As long as you're paying for it at that rate, you'll get to keep that rate. Now Rahul's also doing something else that's kind of cool. With the annual rate, if you subscribe for the 1069 per year, you actually get two one-on-one -on -one training sessions with one of his staff over at Veritech. And they'll kind of get on with you, make sure your RMO ATM is installed correctly, and then take you through a lot of the features of the RMO ATM and how to actually use them. So if you have those questions about, well, how do I use a specific strategy? Rahul's staff is trained so well on the RMO ATM and they will take you through and show you how to do specifically what you want to be able to do in the software. And what you can do is if you want to take advantage of that offer, just go uh, call us at 800-882-3040 or chat with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. Uh, and that you can take advantage of those offers there. And if you do that annual rate, our sales staff will get you in touch with the staff over at Veritech to help you get to that one-on-one -on -one training, those one-on-one -on -one training sessions. Uh, Rahul, can you elaborate any more on what they'd go through in those one-on-one -on -one training sessions? Uh, yes, Kelly. I think what happens is with each one of us, we have different horizons and different asset classes we trade. For example, someone trading gold is trading, uh, you know, maybe uh, a much longer time period in terms of trading hours. Someone trading forex is literally trading uh, virtually 24 hours at time. So it really uh, helps us kind of uh, make you understand what are the different indicators you should be using, time frames that you could be using. Uh, you know, rather than just kind of go with a standard copybook design. So we would really like to, number one, walk you through in terms of what are the different indicators there? How do you set it up for yourself? We kind of custom build some pages for you. And above all, try and give you some inputs in terms of what stuff you are trading on, symbols that you're trading on timeframes you are more comfortable with, kind of uh, tune that whole session towards your needs. Perfect. Yeah. So, you know, the, the yearly rate, you're getting the 10% off, you keep that rate forever. And then you also get those two one on one training sessions. So it's really the way to go uh, to get that annual uh, set up. Uh, but again, you can call us at 800-882-3040 or visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat. And they can help you get set up with that. Uh, they're available. Our sales staff is fantastic and can answer a lot of questions for you up front as well about some of these offers and deals. So uh, I'm just checking for any other questions. I don't see any other uh, questions at this point. So uh, great job as always, Rahul. I always pick up something extra from you every time I hear you present, even though I may hear the same presentation, but it's gonna be something different I learn every time. And I always love that about you. I can always pick up uh, something new and something better. So I appreciate that and I appreciate learning from you every time. Uh, thank you for your great session. Uh, but if you, again, everybody, if you have uh, questions, give us a call at that number or chat with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. Uh, any last thoughts from you, Rahul, before we wrap up? Well, thank you for having me, first of all. And I think finally, I'd like to leave users with the thought of, you know, there are a lot of systems out there, there are a lot of indicators out there. I think someone raised the question of, you know, being complicated and having too much of choice. Well, it's often the, the story with Metastock or any good product, you know, you'd have 200 odd indicators because, you know, we want to give you a great set of tools. And there's, that's the whole idea is to, to, you know, different strokes for different folks. Not everyone's trading the exact same way, which is why you have all those tools out there. But I think uh, I'd like to leave you with a thought that when you get back into trading, A, how do you simplify and decide what are you trading? What are the time frames you want to work with? Ideally, stick to one time frame as I keep on mentioning. Have a suite of tools which does look at short term, medium term, and long term. And I think that's the whole uh, idea of today's session is to expose you that, look, you can stick with one time frame and stay solid and stay simple. So I think uh, keep it simple is what I continue to keep uh, telling users. And uh, today this, today's session was all about that. And hopefully, uh, I've been able to add some thought and some value to what you're already doing. So good luck to each one of you. And again, thank you to Kelly and Metastock for having me. Look forward to getting back to some more. All right. Thank you so much as always, Rahul. Have a great day and thank you everybody for coming.